Good evening. And welcome to Q&A. Well, many people spend their lives considering big questions about the meaning of life and the existence of God. Well, tonight we've got less than an hour. But we do have a very good panel. One of Australia's leading Catholic intellectuals, Father Frank Brennan. Renowned journalist and atheist, Christopher Hitchens, who's in Australia to deliver the opening address at the Festival of Dangerous Ideas. Social commentator and founding editor of The Monthly, Sally Warhaft. And uh, politics lecturer and former spokesman for the Islamic Council of Victoria, Walid Ali, and deputy director of the Sydney Institute, biographer and commentator, Anne Henderson. Please welcome our panel. Okay. Now, remember that Q&A is live from 9.30 Eastern Time, so join the Twitter conversation. And send your questions by SMS to 197 or to our website, abc.net.au slash Q&A. Well, as we go to air tonight, there are reports that thousands may have died in the earthquakes and tsunamis that ravaged our region in the last few days. Well, these sorts of tragedies inevitably raise questions, like our very first one, which comes from Ed Jart Menace. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I would like to um, speak to Mr. Hitchens. Thank you very much. I noticed that you're wearing the Kurdistan flag again on your lapel. And, uh, we might come to that later, Edja. The Kurdish. <laughs> so I really, uh, really thank you very much for that, uh, for your solidarity to the Kurdish people. Uh, my question is that um, thousands of people dying from earthquakes, uh, to the panel question, thousands of people dying from earthquakes can't be called God's punishment. Why is it that a person being saved from under the rubble days later is um, almost invariably called a miracle? And um, also, why should God be credi uh, credited for a um, good act of a human being, saving a fellow, fellow human being from under the rubble, while um, uh, God being spared for the, um, um, for the calamity that, uh, that was brought upon the people? Yes. Look, um, I promise you I did not have anything to do with planting this guy in the audience <laughs> and giving me such a brilliant opening. He, he even recognizes that I'm wearing in my lapel the flag of free Iraq. The Kurdish people like it. Uh, perhaps you're a Kurd yourself, I don't know, but if not, even better. Um, in England, there are, I think, only three villages that don't have a war memorial from the First World War. One of them is called Upper Slaughter, by the way. It's in, it's in, it's in the Cotswolds. I think there are only three or four that don't... I used to, when I was a kid, I used to notice it, and of course anyone who's been to an Anzac Day event will feel the same way. This unbelievable horror show. Uh, and culling of the young. Do you know what those villages are called by the Imperial War Graves Commission? They're called the Blessed Villages. What's blessed about being the only village in a war which was fought for God, King and Country, which didn't have any casualties? And what does it make all the villages that did lose dozens or sometimes more than that of young men, frequently every male member of the family? Are they cursed because they did what the church and the king asked them to do? It's, it's probably the stupidest thing the human race does, is to look for patterns in this way and say, when a baby falls out of a high-rise building and bounces on the grass below, that must be God. And when uh, millions of children die every day for the lack of pure drinking water and just die of diarrhea in a banal manner, that's because God moves in a mysterious way or isn't involved at all. So I think we're off to a racing start, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> on the key question, anyway. Frank Brennan, uh, let's hear from you. Do you have any thoughts on the role of an omnipotent God in natural disasters? Natural disasters happen and an omnipotent God lets them happen if, for those of us who believe in God. Uh, it's not about God saying that we won't let nature take its course. Uh, those of us who do have a religious faith, we equally, I think, are committed to science. But like Christopher says, we all look for patterns. We look for patterns in our daily lives, we look pat for patterns in our histories, we look for patterns in the world. And yes, some villages might be called blessed. Well, if they didn't lose anyone, they wouldn't call themselves cursed. And so what, how do they Only see the themselves? Only the people who call them blessed could do that, because it's the natural corollary. Uh, several leaders of the Christian church, as you know, said about the last tsunami that it was a punishment. In Britain, several of them said it was a punishment for homosexuality. Um, uh, that, it used to be said uh, that uh, earthquakes were a punishment for sodomy. Since we're doing sodomy in the lash, I thought I might as well bring this up. <laughs> Oddly enough, the San Francisco earthquake only hit when San Francisco was famous for other things. <laughs> when New Orleans got flooded, the only bits that didn't get flooded were the red light district. Okay? So anyone who says they know God's mind in this had better not mind looking a bit foolish. 
Or, which you obviously don't, or I had better say, take responsibility, take responsibility and say, yes, by letting it happen, God must in some way wish it to. Let me bring uh, Waleed... Why would you uh, do that? Let, let me bring Waleed Ali into the discussion here. Do you have any thoughts on this? Oh, well, and, and does Islam have a, a concept uh, of a God uh, that allows disasters to happen? Well, I think by definition, if you believe in God, you would have to say that at the very least God allows this thing to happen because to say otherwise would be to... to presuppose that God lacks the power to stop it, which I, I don't know of any religious tradition, certainly no monotheistic religious tradition that would say that. I do want to say something that I definitely agree with in what Christopher said, and that is that this sort of very simple dichotomised thinking about natural disasters, that they are punishment or reward, and this is the prism through which we view them. I mean, this, this has to be some of the most uh, rudimentary, unsophisticated thinking that religious people and, frankly, irreligious people who perpetuate it even via criticism have ever produced. I think it's a ridiculous assertion. And I've not really encountered a serious religious thinker as opposed to one who is too busy playing forms of identity politics or some other kind of rabble-rousing, uh, persecuting some rabble-rousing religiosity, who would argue that. The, the simple fact is that things happen in life that are in our, in our subjective experiences, grotesque and other things that are wonderful. And our judgments immediately about whether they're grotesque and wonderful are, in a sense, beside the point. The question, I think, for religious people who are actually serious about being religious people and with all the introspection that that implies, is what do you do about it and what do you do with it? It's possible that by surviving the earthquake, and moving on to behave in all sorts of ways that you cast yourself into some kind of eternal destruction in religious terms. That's entirely possible, in which case you probably would have been better off to have been killed in the earthquake. Um, it's entirely possible that by gathering all sorts of riches in life and having a, an easy life, that you are similarly um, just deforming your character as a person. So I think the, the, the key question is not so much what is God doing, um, although that's a perfectly legitimate question for a field of inquiry. But I think the more important question for people, particularly religious people, is who am I in response to this? What am I doing? Each of these is a test, uh, whether you're on the good side or the bad side of it, and what do you do with it? And I'm more interested in that, frankly. Let's hear from Anne Henderson. Well. Well, where I come from, um, I can't take too much of the God is a person or a thing or a human creation. I mean, the idea of religion is a human creation, and I grew up a Catholic, and we had heaps of that little pictures of what God was. But God is meaning beyond meaning, and the reason so many human beings have kept on believing in a God is because so much of ordinary material existence here doesn't explain things enough. And whether God had anything to do with natural disasters, I'm really not very interested. It's, it's a question of when people can't understand something, they give, give a force, a, a place in their understanding, which is usually something spiritual beyond the material. And to me, what God is is not so important, but what God, that idea of God, leads people to do. When the um, New Orleans tragedy happens, one of the the most uh, heroic acts was the way the Salvation Army was, was there on the, on the spot the minute it happened. I spent three and a half years going to Villawood Detention Centre and got very much involved, as Frank did, with the, re uh, the so-called illegal um, people that came to Australia um, without visas and trying to get them visas. When I went to the yard, which was a very unpleasant place to be in every week, it wasn't the Fabian Society or the Pacifist Society that was there helping people, but invariably it was older nuns, um, people who...